Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 31st, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Miami, Florida. DC Shadow is a new attack released last week by Benjamin Delpy and Vincent Latou at Microsoft's Blue Hat Illinois conference. You may have heard about them from their popular work on Mimikatz. The DC part of the name DC Shadow is short for Domain Controller and the attack really takes advantage of the replication feature built into Windows Domain Controllers. To better understand how DC Shadow works and how it ties in with Mimikatz, let's talk a little bit about how Mimikatz can be used to interact with domain controllers. If an attacker can run Mimikatz on a domain controller, of course, uh, then the attacker has access to the hashes within the domain controller and can issue what's often referred to as a golden ticket, which gives access to features the domain controller offers. This already provides an attacker with a far-reaching set of rights to access and modify authentication data. What's really more the problem here is how noisy all of this is. Later, the DC Sync attack was added to Mimikatz. DC Sync again uses replication. Now, due to replication or by taking advantage of replication, an attacker is able to read information from a domain controller across the network. So this gives the attacker a little more persistent access to the domain controller and requires less work to be done on the actual domain controller. In order to run DC Sin, the attacker, however, does need to have credentials that do have permission to request replication. Now, typically administrators and members of the domain controller group have that kind of access. Replication can be detected using an IDS, of course. The new DC Shadow attack really takes us a step further. And the main advantage of DC Shadow, again, is stealth, not necessarily what you can actually accomplish with it. With DC Shadow, you do add your own domain controller in the replication mix of that particular organization. Now, you could have done this before, but uh, this would have been quite complex. You have to set up your domain controller that typically requires a full copy of Windows Server with running a virtual machine and all of that. So quite difficult, particular difficult to do it sort of within the organization's network that's being attacked. What DC Shadow really does is it sort of provides an easy wrapper around all of this where you, as part of Mimikatz, can launch this DC Shadow attack, which essentially makes you a domain controller whose data is now being replicated. And with this, you can alter or inject new objects within the domain. So your fake domain controller now is an equal partner within that replication setup. Now, the real advantage here over just taking one of the existing domain controllers and injecting the data on the existing domain controller is that you have full control over this rogue domain controller, in particular when it comes to logging. With the existing domain controllers, you should expect that any significant changes are being logged. Now, any change changes received via replication are usually not logged because you assume that the originating domain controller logs it. So this technique, DC Shadow, really sort of bypasses some of the detective controls someone may have enabled via logging. It does not provide really any capability that the old attacks didn't provide. It just makes it easier, makes it more stealthy to actually perform these attacks. And then a quick update on the Cisco Web VPN attack that I talked about yesterday. It's important to note that details about this attack will be released this coming weekend in Brussels at the Recon conference. So you definitely should make this patch a priority this week. This vulnerability enables an unauthenticated remote attacker to execute arbitrary code. So this could become really ugly if this weekend we do get sort of a working proof of concept, for example, based on the talk released 
at the conference. And last year, we spent a lot of attention at dynamic data exchange attacks or DDE attacks. These attacks used a feature in Office that allowed you to execute arbitrary code by actually just uh, adding a little command within the Office document. This was heavily exploited via Word, but Excel and other Office components are vulnerable as well. Well, uh, Overall, attention sort of died down somewhat in November when Microsoft released a patch that actually disabled this feature by default, at least in Word. For Excel, another popular vector for this particular attack, it's not all that difficult to adjust the registry settings yourself to turn off this behavior. But there's one holdout that really still enables these attacks, and that's Microsoft's OneNote product. OneNote itself doesn't really have any switch to turn off DDE, and it is not actually sort of itself executing it, but you can embed Excel documents, for example, within OneNote documents, and you can use that to bypass the preference that you set for these documents in the registry. Another interesting feature to bypass your last line of defense, the human that actually sees a pop-up box. Well, it is also possible to manipulate the binary name that's being listed within that pop-up box to make it look like it's something benign or expected that's being executed here and not necessarily malware. For more details, see the link to the blog post by Matt Nelson that goes over all of these uh, different uh, bypass techniques. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.